How are you doing? Yeah, I'm well. I'm well. I'm well. I was just saying to Romilly that I think I, we spoke about this film a year ago at last year's film festival, which is just, it, it's insane because I, I don't know if this year has just been, I mean. <laughs> it's a world away, isn't it? It's like, it's so, um, it's so bizarre. It's really bizarre. It's so uh, bizarre. It's so bizarre. How have you been doing with it? Or have you been, have you been able to, because I spoke to a lot of people who have said that, you know, like yourself, writers and stuff have been used the time quite, quite handily. Well, I thought that would be the case. I was like, you know, now I get the time to write everything I've ever wanted to write um, and that I've not written anything. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching like reality TV shows. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with no, that. They, they, they're great. They, they, uh, they, they suck up your time. Yeah. What's your, have you got a favourite? I've been watching I've, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Ah, you've gone for the American. I've been, I've been, well, I started watching The Bake Off again, obviously, because it started. But yeah. I've been watching Four in a Bed loads over the lockdown. Love Four in a Bed. I also love um, Come Dine With Me. I love um, uh, Nightmare Kitchens, the Gordon Ramsay one. That's... Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I love Nightmare Kitchen Nightmares. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> anyway, I'll ask you about your film, which I spoke yeah, to well, about last year. With me. Yeah. Um, uh, which I, I love when I spoke to you last year, I hadn't seen it and I, I hadn't seen it, but now I've seen it and uh, I like lots of other people absolutely loved it. I thought it was amazing. I'm so glad you liked it. Yeah, it was, it was fantastic. And for someone that's uh, uh, had mental health stuff personally and yeah. my, one of my best friends who I live with has her own share of stuff like that I thought it was a yeah. really a really wonderful way of of doing it and obviously I know this is like a personal story to you so I mean was this something that you wanted to do for a long time or did it now just feel like the right time that this story was was you know what time for you to to make it uh, it, yeah, it it definitely felt like the right time for me to make it I felt like I'd um, grown enough to maybe um look at that through through a different um uh, you know it was something that i grew it was, some, it was inspired by somebody that i'd grown up with and um I, I knew that she was living with this but didn't quite know how how strong she was and um how she you know how she was going about her life and navigating this world with that so like um yeah it was definitely something that i wanted to tell and i just felt like it was it, uh it was probably the right time to like introduce it to the world did it, did it, did this one, obviously it's your second film. Did it, did the first one help in the sense of making this the way that you made it in the sense that if this had been your first film, do you think you would have made it in the, in the same way? Well, I, I, yeah, well, it, it, the first one helped in that I learned that I shouldn't put myself in it. Um, so uh, <laughs> that, that, that helped. Um, um, and it, I'm glad I didn't make this for my first film because my first film was, was certainly me experimenting and, and, and trying things out and, uh, trying to find my voice so it was um you know th this I definitely feel like I have and uh, you know I, I, I'm glad that this is my second one certainly not my first for sure yeah did, it, did this take a long time for you to get to get going obviously I know that independent films such as this obviously it takes a hell of a lot of effort just to get it made let alone get it released I mean was this a long a long journey for you it was it took a while to write it, it like I, I kept redrafting and, and and changing it and it took about three years for that part of the process. And then, yeah, it was hard to get, it, it, like I, we got it made, so it obviously wasn't that hard, but um, you know, a lot of people have it a lot harder. Um, but uh, yeah, it was, it was, it's a, you know, it's a, some people want to talk about it and some people don't. So like, you know, it was certainly an interesting subject to, to tackle. Um, and I think partly the humor was something that, you know, some people, you know, didn't really know the way into it or how it would be told in that way. And that was really important for me that it would, it would have that side of it. So that was, you know, a tiny bit of the struggle of doing it, but um, it wasn't that hard really. No, it was, once we got Sally on board, it was pretty okay. Yeah. In terms of, in terms of uh, making it, then obviously it's a, uh, we, there's lots of movies about mental health and all that kind of stuff, but yours is a very, I mean, you have a very distinctive filmmaking style anyway. Uh, was it important to you that you didn't just make, you made it in a way that was accessible, but also had, I don't know, kind of mirrored the the kind of the way a person's brain feels in the sense that it's kind of fractured and a bit all over the place that the, the film kind of reflected that. Yes, it's interesting. I read a review that was like, um, the movie, movie is uh, slightly schizophrenic, like it's protagonist. And that was a negative thing. And I was like, well, that was the intention, definitely. <laughs> I'm sorry that, you know, you, you took it that way. Um, yeah, for sure. So yeah, it, de it definitely was. You know, I, I think that, um, again, the humour thing is, is what's interesting to me and certainly what people seem to be picking up on in the fact that, you know, some people feel uncomfortable with it. And I, I think that it's really important. It's, I think it's uh, ridiculous to say that somebody that's living with mental health conditions can't crack a joke or be funny. And it was never the intention to be laughing at, rather, rather laughing with, because 
she's beautiful and she's absolutely wicked in, in, in certain circumstances. So, um, yeah, that was definitely my intention to, to, to go with that. And, um, but I, I didn't, I didn't really want it to be, you try and make everything accessible in a way because you want people to watch it and you want people to like it. But if you, if you go in with like, this has to appeal to everybody, it's really not going to work at all. It, 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 um, it then just becomes too manufactured and, and doesn't really feel, feel like what you, what the original idea was when you're making something, you have like an original idea and then many, many things happen and many people come and put ideas on top of that and try and make it something else. And then you, you, you end up in the edit trying to take all the ideas off and try and remember what you actually, you know, set out to make. Um, so I definitely wanted it to be accessible, but that certainly, w I didn't sit down being like, everybody has to like that. I just wanted people to connect with it. And if, if they connected with it and maybe knew somebody that's gone through this or, or they've gone through it, then hopefully it helps them in some, in some way. Yeah. Are you talk there about, about Sally, obviously that's in terms of helping you get her financed. If she's a, you know, you get her on board, it's, it makes it a little bit easier for you, but did you always have her, uh, in mind and did you kind of, if so, did you write it for her or did you kind of mold it to her once you'd said yes? I wrote it for myself, and then when I realized I couldn't play Jane, um, I, I, I passed it on to Sally. Um, uh, always with Sally in mind, and there was a point where she couldn't do it because of other commitments, and I wasn't going to make the movie. I knew it had to be Sally. Like, no disrespect to any other actress in the world, but she's the only one that could do it this way. Yeah. And she, I mean, she's fantastic in, in the role. I mean, uh, did, uh, obviously, I, I guess for, for as, a, as an actor with a director, you hope, especially when you work with someone that's quite established, I guess, that you, you hope that they trust you and stuff. I mean, she seems to be, she's fantastic in movies, seemed to buy into your vision pretty early on. Was that an easy thing? And did that make it easy for you that she was just like, absolutely, this is exactly the way to do, rather than what you just said of someone maybe coming and watering it down a little bit and making it more accessible? Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, no, she did. Well, it, it helped that we were, we've been friends for a long time. So um, we immediately had a shorthand and uh, the references that I pulled out were, you know, stuff that she liked as well. And to be honest, she was attached for about two years. So we had like probably the longest prep in independent film history where we could just go go back and forth and um, share ideas. And, and the same with the rest of the, uh, the cast. They were also wonderful in, in buying into it and and really going with it. And, it, you know, it's and experimenting i mean i got penelope wilton to say fuckhead so i was pretty happy with that <laughs> yeah. yeah that was a good that was a good moment i thought um it's, uh, this is gonna sound a silly question but what you said she was on board for like two years did you did you kind of secretly hope she wasn't she didn't win an oscar for shape of water because her price might have got, her price might have gone up because <laughs> <laughs> you never know these things happen i, I remember re this is on, on a tangent but i remember reading because i'm such a huge fan of jim carrey that he set a deal with somebody to do dumb and dumber before Ace Ventura came out, but after Ace Ventura came out opening weekend, his his price went from less than a million to like ten million dollars. So I just I just really? it's just a, a thing. She comes it comes with a different, I guess a different premature if she was an Oscar winner. But I guess she was. We knew that she was nominated, so we made her sign the contract immediately, so the money couldn't. <laughs> no, she, um, I was secretly hoping she'd win one hundred percent, and probably should have. So um, yeah, no. Probably, probably should have. I mean, you got a great cast as well. Uh, obviously, David, David Thewlis and, and Morford, who uh, has exploded with David Copperfield and Saint Maud, which is coming out next yeah. week. It's um, Billy Piper, who's got a new TV show. I mean, all these people just help to kind of create your world. I mean, it must have been great when you saw you got those guys. You knew right that I can at least not have to worry about that side of it. That I can just worry about my vision and and make it so, if you like. Yeah, it's well. I, I don't know who said it, but you know filmmaking you know like is, is 90 percent casting really like if you can if you get get it right then you really don't have much else to do apart from make sure it's recording um and so like every, every time you know we we confirmed an actor that you know wanted to do it whether it be billy or paul hilton or morvid like you know i i just felt like a competition winner really i felt like this is amazing have they read the wrong script <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um it's, it's gonna sound such a such a silly kind of cliche question but uh, obviously you make a movie like this and people are going to talk about it and the awareness of mental health is obviously slowly going to where it needs to go and needs to go even further yeah. are you hoping that even though this movie is not part of the discussion but you hope that it maybe connect even if it connects with one person it, it helps to change their outlook or or kind of makes them feel uh, feel seen uh that you've you've kind of done the job that you set out to do yeah, I just hope people talk about it. That's all I hope. Like, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I'm not going to say I don't care if people hate it because I, it definitely stings every time. Um, but like, 
you know, I really don't, it doesn't matter what your opinion is of it, but rather just talk about it and talk about how we treat people um, and uh, yeah, how we condition ourselves to, be, you know, to, to, to look at people a certain way. Um, I, I think it's just about being kind and, you know, whether somebody's really rude to you during a day or you're passing somebody and they're not nice, you know, they, that doesn't define them, that they're not, they're not that person. There's many, many things going on. We all have our own realities to deal with. So I, I think that it's just about, um, yeah, looking through everyone's looking glass, really. Yeah. And just finally, how's, how's things with you? Like, are you, are you back to work now? Obviously, I know, obviously you you always got irons in the fire with writing and directing. And I've, I've read that you're going to do another one at some point anyway, but in terms of you as an actor, have you been able to, to work during this mad time? Um, no, I've not. But weirdly, the, the yeah, the film that we were going to do at some point, we're doing. So we we shoot a week today. Oh wow! Is this your third the third film? Yeah. So this oh, is wow. Fantastic Flitcrofts with uh, with Mark Rylance. So uh, based on a true story of a guy called Morris Flitcroft, who was a crane operator and uh, tick professional, and uh, got into the the British Open having not played much golf at all. So oh, wow. uh, yeah. So that that we we've been in prep for like the last two months, and it's. It's crazy to think we're shooting now, and um, but also really special, and um, yeah, I think it's going to be good. Mark Rylance as well, not bad. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> not bad. I, not bad. I, again, I, I I'd hoped that I could have played the part, but it, you know, yeah. <laughs> weren't, weren't buying it. So uh, I, I suppose it's Mark. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I look forward to that, dude. Thank you so much for your time again. Uh, it's always great to talk to you, and uh, yeah, I hope the movie goes good for you, and uh, and yeah, stay safe in this crazy time. No, thank you, Tom. So I appreciate the time. Thanks for talking to me and thanks for saying nice words. That's all right. You're very welcome. All true. Well, most of them. Ninety-nine <laughs> <laughs> percent of it. Ninety-nine percent of it. Yeah, yeah. The Sally Hawkins thing. Was, you know, right. <laughs> thanks, mate. Take care. Yeah, good to see you. See Bye. You too. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey. hey you guys.